Uh, all right, welcome back to the Shady Harbor. Sorry I'm so late. Um, it's going to be a little bit low energy today. Uh, low energy, feeling low. Let's see if we can, I don't know, make it better. Um, but yeah, welcome to the Shady Harbor with me, Little Fox. Um, going to jump straight into it with some lovely, lovely ESO grind and... Uh, Jump straight into my oh, what is apparently my Twitch dashboard? Timcast. I thought this would be an interesting thing to watch today, or see how much we can get out of it. Yourself. Okay. okay. Let's see. This is. Uh... I hope you yeah. You had a good Thanksgiving. Yeah. You were uh, with your families or loved ones or at least uh, relaxed and enjoyed yourself. Over the past week, there was a, a particularly big news story that's resulted in a continued news cycle, which is now going on for over a week, which is in many ways unheard of. But right now, because Donald Trump went to dinner with Ye and Nick Fuentes, among others, he is now being denounced by Mike Pence, several Republican senators. And uh, yeah, Trump, Trump went to dinner with a Nazi, an anti-Semite and a proponent of uh, torture. So, uh... Great job. Oh, this year? For whatever reason, this story, for, for many reasons, I suppose people have made, this story has persisted till today. And we are able to actually sit down with the, s several of the individuals involved in that story, notably Ye, Nick Fuentes, and Melianopoulos, of course, who made the dinner happen. It's my understanding. Or no, at least got the no. I, had, I had the dinner invite before I met Milo. Okay, my bad, my bad. There you go. So uh, we're going we're gonna to jump right into I this story. I just overcomplicated it. Absolutely. So we're, we're going we're gonna to start with that. There's a lot we, we, we want to talk about. And... Uh, you know what, man? This is a this is a very uh, big story. Uh, a lot of people have questions about, you know, what were Trump's intentions? Why were certain people invited? And Trump, of course, has, has issued statements. So a lot of people want to know where he stands and more importantly, what happened there and why. And there's also the questions about what Yay 24 means. And I'll keep that a little bit vague so that they can answer to that and, and speak more to that. And then, of course, we're going to get into a lot of different issues. However, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. We're going to have a members only uncensored show, which will probably get a bit more in depth on a lot of other issues uh, that, I'll just leave it at that. TimGuest.com, become a member, support our work, and we'll talk about more there. Smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us, as I mentioned, is we have Ye himself. Would you like to introduce yourself, good sir? You did it. There you go. <laughs> I think everybody knows who you are. And uh, which of uh, you gentlemen would like to introduce yourself? Nicholas, please. Hi. Yeah, I'm uh, Nick Fuentes. First time here on the TimCast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. What do you do? Oh, <laughs> I'm a live streamer. I uh, I do a show called America First on Cozy.tv. You're, you're a fascist. Right. And of course, Milo, you were it's here. a fucking fascist. Yes, I'm your best ever guest. <laughs> so we, we've been told that uh, the episode with you was one of the best podcasts ever. People really enjoyed hearing you speak. I think that's accurate. Okay. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks, thanks for coming thanks, back. Thanks. I was wondering how I was going to uh, make it even more extraordinary the second time I visited, but I think I might have pulled it off. <laughs> Luke's here. Total Sausage Fest tonight. Um, mm -hmm. Welcome. My name is Ogrodowski of WeAreChange.org. Today I'm wearing my Epstein Didn't Epstein Himself t-shirt, which you could get on the best political shirts. Com. And I think we should be using that word a little bit more, just like, you know, this YouTube channel didn't Epstein itself. And if this YouTube channel is Epstein, we will be streaming on Twitter. Uh, so, yeah, I started the T-shirt company after YouTube demonetized me. So the best political shirts dot com because you guys buy it. That's why I'm here. Thank you so much for having me. And of course, Serge. And I am Serge dot com. Pleasure, guys. All right. And uh, I'll just pull up this story from The Hill, which is from earlier today, 5 p.m. Pence says Trump should apologize. It's wrong to give anti-Semite a seat at the table. This, of course, is related to a dinner that happened. And I, I, I was wrong I mean, a lot of details. So a dinner happened. Uh, Nick, you were there. Yay, you were there. I just want to uh, start off by how did this din dinner come to happen and, and what happened? I was talking to Trump for about a month. We had scheduled the dinner in October and then he announced for president. He, he pushed the dinner back to November. Um, and I've been pulling together a campaign. And after I put up the, the DEF CON tweet, uh, a bunch of people that have been canceled, like Alex Jones, I started getting in contact with other people that were now on the you know, the inside of the matrix and holy shit. So like, so basically like he went through the conspiracy theory, not job uh, tree to get to Trump. The fact that he could do that is just insane. And, uh, Alex Jones pr producer <sighs> said that Milo wanted to contact me and here we are. So that's how you guys got in contact. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, originally. And, um, and then, uh, I've suggested, uh, um, that we bring in uh, Nicholas as a, as a enormous extra brain firepower that he is, um, he's most extraordinarily brilliant uh, political commentator of his generation, um, and he's uh, been treated just about as badly as anybody. So I thought he deserved to be in the room too. Mm -hmm. And um, 
yeah, that's, that's pretty much how we go together. So I have some questions about that, but let's we'll, we'll, we'll get through the dinner portion of, you know, how exactly this happened, what went down. So this is how you get in contact, the three of you. How is it that Nick ends up invited to this dinner and, and what happened? <laughs> well, he he was rolling with me. I was impressed with Nick and I was like, just come to the dinner. And we had uh, Karen Giorno uh, pick us up from the airport. And there was a lot of back and forth. There's another gentleman named Jamar Montgomery that was with us. It's a uh, he's an engineer at Boeing and his was it? I'm telling him just that we should raise everyone's volume. Okay, cool. Um, and we sat there and it was like when Trump came in, we were, I said, do you want to sit alone? He's like, no, bring your friends in. So a big thing is like Trump had no idea who Nick Fuentes was. No. And, but this whole, I just. I think I uh, like, I, I, I believe that. I believe that Trump doesn't know, know who Nick Fuentes is. But like the fact that that got all the, he, that Nick Fuentes got all the way to seeing Trump is just absolutely insane to me just crazy i just gotta go right to the heart of this anti-semite claim that's happening this oh. is something if you read the definition it, oh, the, it oh, said fucking hell the, the definition you okay. can't claim that there's multiple people inside of banks or in media what? that are all jewish or you're anti-semitic and that's no. the truth like what? It's the truth. What are we talking about? And what, what, what do you mean? You mean, I'm saying like, I've been labeled anti-Semite, right? So. Well, yeah, because you've said anti-Semitic things. There's different beliefs about our, our bloodlines, you know, like the documentary that. Your bloodlines Kyrie don't posted. matter. And like, right, like it's got to do with power structure. Like the biology of shit doesn't, doesn't matter. Like, I'm not talking about the social aspect to bloodlines, like, that does have an effect, like, you know, your history and stuff like that, uh, and what people will choose to use against you at the end of the day. But we're talking about... We're talking about, um, like... We're, talk we're talking about, like, a, a group of people that have been oppressed for, like, millennia for apparently being everything that's wrong with the world. Like, it's actually quite insane when you go back and you just see how much hatred there is throughout history towards just one group of people. And, like, that's been imposed upon them, not the other way around. It's just fucking ridiculous. In general, you know, it's not that you're not allowed to say that uh, Jewish people uh, own the banks. Um, it's just that it's not fucking true. America has been left ignorant and history has been changed. So when <sighs> we start questioning things Prove it. that question the indoctrination, then you immediately get, you know, um, you said debanked or de what did you say happened to you or... Demonetized, deplatformed. De yeah, demonized, demonetized. And what's so beautiful about this time is everyone got to see what's really been happening. And now we can really understand. We can see that Ron Emanuel was right next to Obama and hey, then Jared shame. Kushner was right next to Trump. Da -da. Welcome. But, so you, <laughs> so we're, we're getting right into it, I guess, right? I was, I was hoping to go for the news first before we got into all of this stuff. Uh, I, think, I think the issue is, uh, one way to put it, is you're expounding upon a localization issue that you've witnessed, right? Let, let, me, let me clarify. There are a handful of people that you see are Jewish in a certain place, and then you associate Judaism with the power, as a, whereas I view that as not relevant to it. Like, yeah, you're substantially more powerful than I am, but I don't view what you're doing as an issue of black people. Yeah, but have you ever heard the term the black vote? So it's okay to put us in one net, but it's not okay for me to put them in one net. Yeah, but I mean, that's the basis uh, of the hypocrisy that people have been <laughs> have been thinking about and knowing about and realizing for decades. We were all wondering how this dam was going to break. Everybody in the country was wondering what what is the root of this hypocrisy? Why can people talk about white people a certain way? Why can't they talk about that group a certain way? And uh, yeah, no, like yeah, like I I've I, I've seen him leave, but then like I I started watching I think Lance uh, watch it and he's just he just says some fucking deranged shit beforehand no one's talking about the deranged shit he was talking about like leading up to this stuff it's in, it's just like what the fuck 
the, the what the fuck am I doing? The wretched and wicked and oppressive prevailing orthodoxy of uh, cancel culture. Well, it turned out that the one thing that was going to break the dam was the biggest star in the world. And it took the biggest star in the world to do it. Um, uh, and, and, and now the dam is broken. So let me, let, let me tell you my issue. I, I don't like identitarianism. I mean, it's not, I mean, like, define what the biggest star is in the world. Are we talking about, like, the richest? Because uh, it, ain't, it ain't yay anymore. You guys are familiar with what that is? Well, yeah. they started it, and I'm, they've been visiting sure, on us. I, we're trying to break it. When I was asking you about running for uh, president, you, you immediately said, well, you know, you'd be good for the black vote. And I said, is that because I'm black? No, not just because of that. So is that, are you doing the same thing? I didn't say that was the only reason. I said it was because you're personable to the common person, and you probably would do well with the black vote. Absolutely. Just because I, I'm black is a lot of black people that don't like me. Uh, of course, I think uh, I think race plays a role in a lot of things. Absolutely, and I think that for I, I think I think the I, the construct of race has really been forced upon us as just something for us to be woke about and just constantly talk about and use it. Oh, as oh fucking hell! And this is this is what I mean. Like uh, conservatives always get are always halfway there. Like they'll say something that's true and then just go off into like a tangent which doesn't have anything to do with what they were talking about like what Ye what yay has sa said right there is correct like yeah like race has been imposed upon him but then he goes to blame like wokeness as uh, as the problem behind things but like that's just not the case that's just not the truth that's not factual that's just your opinion man no one thinks of it like that except for you i guess it's just yeah Disappointing. He's like walls. Could you but, say, say the same thing about Judaism? <clears throat> well, let's look at the facts of what I'm saying, though. If you say in this neighborhood what where facts? they gerrymander, there's this amount of time. So, hey, I wasn't doing that. I was just gerrymandering the lawyers and the Hollywood executives <laughs> and the people at the bank that debanked me and then froze my accounts. You know, it's like we want to jump into protecting the idea that we can't put a net around something, right? But that's been my job as a producer to take, uh, you know, a Roy Ayer sample and put a James Brown drum and put it within a two, two minute, three minute song. That's the way I actually think. And that's the way I talk. And now this morning I found out that they were trying to put me in prison because what they did was uh, I, put, I moved $140 million into uh, JP Morgan. And I said, I want to talk to Jamie Dimon. Like, look at me. I'm just going in naive you know, multi-billionaire, like may, maybe Jamie Dimon will let me in on some deal flow. Wrong. <laughs> and I'm just like <laughs> banging my hands like, I want to meet with Jamie. And I start complaining online and then they debank me for complaining. And so I'm, I'm about to get debanked. They They're like, you him? need to go to Trump's the bank, AXO, whatever, you gotta go. And I'm like, I've been trying to buy my own bank for the longest. And then we figured out how to get my own bank. It's like 50 million, 75 million. So I'm about to buy my own bank. But then as you're about to take the money out, here comes Adidas with a $275 million bill for marketing funds that they agreed upon. Because I said to them, hey, I'm the marketing, give me the marketing fund, which proves by the response they got when they you know, stole the designs and said, we're gonna not call them Yeezys anymore. So this is what I was already fighting Adidas for. So I'm fighting Gap, get out of Gap, fighting Adidas. And then I deal with this little bit of noise from, you know, Zionism from the fashion world where they use this plant named Gabby who's obviously like some kind of CIA agent knows nothing about fashion This is a certain thing when someone CIA dress, agent. Whoa, what the fuck? You know that this is really like hard to keep, person, keep up with eh? What the fuck? They're just there as like the society like the control that they try to use with celebrities Which has now been broken right because you know where it broke and I'm, I'm I, okay I want to get on like LeBron in a second, but I'm gonna come back to this and just talk about this morning where uh, you know, I'm not going to mention her name because she's a nice lady, but someone at Cohen Reg Resnick tells me, and I tell my, all of my finance people never use the term a lot, but they said, okay, you're going to have to pay a lot of taxes. And that made me feel like they're just like waiting, like we finally got them. We finally can put them in jail. And I was like, can I still run for president in jail? I found out I could. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that's, that's fine then. <laughs> it'll, it'll be okay. But, 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 but if you were, if you were Jeffrey Epstein, they wouldn't touch your bank account. They would allow you to break the rules regulations, just like JP Morgan and Chase did, just like Deutsche Bank did. So there is an issue to bring up with that. But when it comes to the race stuff, I think this is an important discussion to have because what, what, I think I have to, I have to complete this thought. You guys got to okay, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Because I'm talking about literally finding <laughs> out that they were trying to put me in prison. Like, yeah, he's yeah, just one of those people that just wants to talk. He just loves the sound of his own voice, just like me. This morning, watch this. So this morning, yes. So not you know not come to my house this morning, but I found out. Okay, so they froze. They put a seventy-five million dollar hold on four of my accounts, and then they said you owe a lot of taxes. Took me like six hours to find out how much a lot was. They said, <laughs> well, around fifty million dollars. Now I'm going to different CFOs. Like, okay, so would this be tax evasion? Because I'm obviously not the most 
financially literate person on the planet. I was just a child, basically. Like when you become famous, you you stop growing at that point. I became famous at age 24 and I had handlers around. I had my mom around, different things. And it was always like you go from one handler to the next handler to the next handler. So now I'm having, I, I, I get to actually learn how to run a company. I get to learn how to, uh, you know, uh, to count. Really, I had, I was like Pablo in a movie. It was like, I didn't even know where to put the money, like literally making <laughs> $300 million cash, but you're just like a high priced, you know, we're not going to use the S word just because it's like too passe to use it. But it's like next, you know, next year I was supposed to make $500 million in royalties and like no one needs this amount of money. But when I would work on homeless shelters and ideas, I'd have a contractor who won't say what race. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> the you know, they'd be tearing down the contracts. It's all about, you know, position. It's not about the amount of money that you have. And, you know, to come in here, I feel like it's a setup to be like defending. I'm not going to go through another, like, I'm literally going to walk the F off the show if I'm sitting up here having to, you know, talk about, you can't say that it was Jewish people that did it when every sensible person knows that. I mean, Jon Stewart knows what happened to me and they took it too far. It was like American History X. Like my head was on the side of the curve. What the fuck? So he's so he's literally just saying that Jewish people like um are behind everything that he did. Like, man, you fuck around, you find out, eh? I know, right? Like, uh, I don't really want I don't really want to call him mental and like um crazy and stuff because like he does have his mental issues and like I, I don't think that should be like really attacked. Like, it's not because of his mental issues that he's like he's anti-semitic like having having um having bipolar doesn't make you anti-semitic or a racist or a bigot like let's be let's 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 be real about that for a second but like what he just said there was just literally just blaming jewish people uh for um him losing all his money when like literally it was his own it, it was like I hardly ever get to actually say this about, like, bil billionaires or millionaires or whatever. Like, it was his own damn decisions that fucking led to this. Like, he had actual agency over his own decisions in this place. He had, he had the privilege of choosing not to say dumbass shit. And what did he do? He just said dumbass shit. Like... I don't, I can't really, like, empathize with the man. I'm sorry. He had it all, and then he started attacking, um, Jewish people. Like, every fucking butthurt, um, fascist has in all of history. Seriously, it's, it's just... <sighs> man. Can they come up with something new? You know? Is it possible for them to come up with something new? I don't think so. It's the same old shit. Earth, and the exact people that I called out kicked my head. We found out that my trainer was a MK Ultra uh, Canadian uh, he intelligence. Was a, yeah. He worked in the defense research and uh, development uh, in the Canadian military, essentially working on psyops Who's in this the guy? Canadian military. This is Harley Pasternak. <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying is, look, they tried to medicate me. They, I was exhausted. They wrongly diagnosed me. And they, 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 when I asked them, how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly? It took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed about the amount, right? And I refused to take this, right? You understand that if I had taken the medication, I would not be here and it would have been, oh, whoa, it's, he was deeply troubled. We miss him. We love his music, though. Well, they would have Britney Spears. Oh, hey, it. welcome. I mean, they they Michael Jack Jack this morning. He spoke his, his truth. Uh, I think we heard his words agree. People are starting to wake up. Um, wake up from what? Like, what are you talking about waking up? Like, the, attacking Jewish people isn't anything new, bro. <laughs> it's fucking old-ass shit. Like, as, as, as let, let me use, let, let me use a, uh, a, uh, a music industry term. It was, it's derivative. It's boring. Like... Ye is just copying the same old tune that's been that that's been peddled over and over again in all of si in history. He started hating on marginalized groups and discovered that that's just not not where we're at as as a society anymore. He fucked around and he found out. I have no I have no sympathy.
um, he can speak whatever th truth he thinks he believes, um, but using that as some sort of excuse for being anti-Semitic, I'm sorry, you don't have you don't you don't have my support for that. It was the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Yeah, he blamed people with no proof. Like, show me receipts. You can't do it. Can't people have been here? You know. uh, Yay is the canary in the coal mine. Yay is a millionaire who doesn't live in the same sphere as you. Uh, he, he doesn't have the perspective of a working class person in his own words. Did you even listen to his own words right then when he spoke about the fact that he stopped growing up in his 20s? That's really fucking apparent when he talks about bullshit conspiracy theories that don't exist. Man, if you're going to talk conspiracy theories, you better f show me some solid-ass fucking receipts. Otherwise, I'm going to call you a fucking idiot. Or, or worse, yeah. So, look, <laughs> guess, guess what they did, look what they did to Brittany. When she went in, she was tired, she was exhausted, yeah. she was in a bad way. But 10 years of that medication wrecked her brain. You can see it now. Yeah. You can see there's not much of her left. You, you mentioned Pasternak was the name? Uh, yeah. Yes, Harley Pasternak. That's the... That's anyway, if you're, all you're going to say is that, um, oh, people are waking up and, uh, yeah, he's speaking his truth, like, and boring shit like that. Just, like, fuck off. Like, say something actually interesting that I can interact with. Seriously. You're, ba you're boring content. That's the uh, text message that you yes. posted that Here, we were talking about here, here's, before. Here's, That's here's, the lobotomy. Here's, here's, you know, yeah. Before the show, obviously, I'm getting a bunch of messages from people. People are hitting me up, and they're like, you shouldn't host them. They're anti-Semitic. They're white supremacists. They're racist. I do find the idea, uh, I do find it funny or weird or whatever that, you know, Nick, they call you a white supremacist. You're here working with or for, you know, one of the most powerful black men, one of the wealthiest and most famous. But uh, a lot of people were saying, on the right, specifically, don't platform them. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I want to I understand what they're thinking and why they're thinking it. They're part of... The, they're I mean, one of the reasons people said don't platform them was including Nick Fuentes in that, because Nick Fuentes is, like, a, a, an actual Nazi. <laughs> so, yeah. They're involved in what may be the biggest news story of the past week, and we have an opportunity to sit down and, and talk Because the them. red media controls both sides. I just said it as simple as possible. Jared Kushner was next to Trump. Ron Emanuel was next to Obama. But see, Since it, 1940... Go ahead. I was going to say, isn't that an issue of these individuals? Like, you, you're, you're extrapolating... I'm not having... I'm going to get... I'm going to order... With the last of my money that's available in a different account, I'm going to order a PJ before I sit and have another Lex Friedman setup conversation. When when I'm literally trying, they're trying to put me in jail for my opinion. But I, I'm I not. Get that. I'm not going to have that Bullshit. opinion. I don't care about people. Bullshit. The, those are bots that are trying to tell you. We realize. Look at Pence. He sold bots. Trump out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's like I would have never uh, wanted to do anything that hurt Trump. I'm on. I'm on Trump's side. Trump said things that hurt me. Real life isn't uh, meant to be entertained. You sound like a victim of the instant and uh, mindless media consumption. If truth bores bores you, then just ignore politics. Like it's that simple. What? Like you said absolutely nothing. Then you are responding to someone whose job it is to be an entertainer. What are you talking about? Why? Why are you here? <laughs> do you? What? What do you think a streamer is, my dude? He lied about me, but I mean, he's known for lying. And when people used to tell me that, you know, he's a liar, it's like, you know, I went into the trenches for Trump. That's another conversation. There was no one in my position that wore that hat. And all of my surroundings exhausted me. It was like death by a thousand questions. I know I'm jumping to another thing. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I know you got a rep well, for your, he's your, your, your people online, right but no, it's no, like no, you got a person no, in real no, life so. that, I, I'm not with it, bro. I lost, the, I, I lost the money for the freedom of speech. And that's what makes me the only American that we know that really deserves freedom, to run the- You didn't, wait, wait freedom of speech government didn't take his money uh, the government didn't take your money yeah like at all what are you talking about hold on a second give me a sec profit shield yeah claim that shield um health taxes is theft lol yeah, well, hmm. you can have that argument if you like, but until you come up, come up with a better situ, better, better way to for people to share resources. All right, one hand and one shield. Puncture, low slash, a deep lunge.
puncture. It wants me to do puncture and javelin. And fortress. Okay. Didn't Ye say he uh, couldn't pay his taxes during his debanking whinging? Maybe. Everything Ye said was factual. Uh, proof. 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 His bank account taken away because of opinions. Hey, anyone can have opinions, but if you if you don't have opinions which uh, make money, uh, then you aren't going to get very far in a capitalist uh, society. Seems like if you don't like capitalism, then you should probably uh, aim for something a little bit better. Uh, I'm a foot shot soldier for the establishment. You aren't a rebel. Uh, you, I don't know. You're just projecting. You, I, I don't know if you've got that copy pasted uh, for other people, but like I've said, none of these things. Hey, eh? you don't know anything about me, obviously. Uh, last part should scare you, regardless of political political opinions, shouldn't it? Um, uh, honey, honey, I'm a leftist. Um, we're used to having our political, um, our freedom of speech taken away constantly. So this is nothing new to me. It's not being scared. It's just like the way life is. If you don't, if your opinions don't make money, then they won't. You you aren't going to have money. Yay's opinions. It's you defend corrupt banking institutions taking away people's money. What has that got to do with anti-Semitism? What do the banks have to do with anti-Semitism, buddy? You can't even back anything up that Ye said. Nothing nothing Ye said can be backed up with facts. All you can do is claim that. And so I'm going to just have to say, you know, big wall one of these. Country, because everyone else, your boy DeSantis, Trump, whoever, your boy! They, they, they raising a peach. Fucking hell, I love, I love how Americans are so, like, hung up on Pence and... Biden and Trump and all this shit, as if like it matters who you fucking vote in. You, you think the rest of the world gives a fuck who's uh, who's the president of America? You bought you you increase bombings of the rest of the world every fucking year. Yeah, vote harder. Yeah, vote harder for Democrats, and we'll give you back your bodily autonomy, women. Neck minute. Oh, you didn't vote hard enough. Disgust, dang. To dish over on the Democrat side is is going to play the game. Look, look. And, like, here, here's what I was trying to get yeah. to. I, 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 you went right into the anti-Semite thing. I think it's something that should be talked about. But if you if you start bringing this up, you're going to ask my opinion on it. I'm going to disagree with you. I didn't I, ask I, your opinion on it. You no, jumped but, but, into it. But I, but you, I don't care about your opinion. I like your opinion on how we win an election. But I don't care thing. about anybody's opinion, bro. I lost. They tried to put me in jail. They blocked two two. Tried to put him in jail. Who? What the fuck is he talking about? Again, I need receipts. Show me the receipts. Nobody fucking gives a fuck about you, you, your opinions, yay. Like, they just don't make money. Like, seriously. Billion dollars I had, like what I told Farrakhan, I said, look, oh, is it anti-Semitic for me to say his name out loud? Like, I, I the told- minister. Fa yeah, the <laughs> minister. Like, I told- Obama which, I, just, I just love this shit as well. They're just like, <clears throat> what? I just said, I just said the word Soros. Yeah, I know, but you said that in a sentence, uh, in a sentence that said, that, that stated that Soros is, like, controlling the banks. But I said the word Soros! They're, they're, they're cancelling me because I said the word! I just said his name! It's like, no, no, con- because of the context, dude. My dude. Context. Context exists. You, you understand this, right? But no. 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 Nah. Ah, <sighs> it's it, it's just it's it's just fucking sad and hilarious. What is that X? Battle axe, yeah. It's just the axe I need. Hold on. What? I don't have uh, I don't have a um training axe. Yeah, fuck that. Wait, what does this one do? Iron axe of flame, iron axe of frost. Damn it! None, neither of them do training. Oh well. I'll get one eventually. Um. But yeah. 
met with him too? Oh, he was. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the uh, Jewish people allowed uh, Obama to meet with the minister. You know, so. Uh, and then motherfuckers come into my chat thinking I'm a lib. Farrakhan said, well, did he have the money? The contract for the next four years, if I hadn't done anything, would have been $500 million a year for four years. What I was fighting for was the IP so my children could, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, just sometimes I think about seven thoughts at one time. Because anything I yeah, see, I, I come up with like seven answers to it and then just choose <laughs> what it is. But, but I, the thing is, when I said my children, the reason why my, my brain kind of blocked, because it's like God is saying... You know, your, your children are going to be okay. The, you know, baby mama's got money, right? God is using me. He's breaking me down, removing all of the, you know, richest person, all of this, so I can serve him. And the more... A lot more of the, uh, uh, RW channels are doing that. I think Kanye shows the double standard. It's good to have a discussion. What double standard? There's no double standard being being played here. There's There is a guy who is just being anti-Semitic and people are calling him out for it. That's what this is at the end of the day, is just peddling conspiracy theories, and uh, he's fucking around and finding out that people don't really care for that shit anymore. There's too much information online now. People call it woke. Ain't woke. Those things are taken away from me, the more I can be empty and be a vessel and be able to be used. And right now it's like, you're not going to take... If, if we can't, you're not going to take my pain away, right? The Jewish people say, it's the Holocaust, this happened, and you can't say anything about it. We can't take their pain away. No one's going to denounce the fact that they tried to lock me up. That's what, because every time I'm just holding stride, and it's like, I didn't, I thought I was more Malcolm X, but I find out I'm more MLK, because as I'm getting <laughs> hosed down every day by the press, and financially, I'm just standing there, and when... He's neither Malcolm M Malcolm X or MLK. He doesn't understand that the alienation from his labor, because, like, as he said, he stopped he stopped growing up in his twenties, early twenties, because he had he no longer um, was able to open up to class consciousness. He had too much money, and like that's not like me saying that that's not me putting a moral judgment on him, but it's just an explanation of why he doesn't seem to understand the plight of the average um, black person anymore because he hasn't had to deal with it um but that's beside the point anyway like i don't know why i brought that up at the end of the day like <sighs> I, I, I thought highland was up there sorry getting, getting distracted the eternal hunt what is this hughes bane i don't know what that is stross mckay i need to pick up these books Yeah, he's more like Gandhi. Yeah, yeah, starving, starving Marvin. But yeah, he's not some. He's a millionaire who lost a bunch of his money. Cry me a fucking river. When I found out that they tried to put me in jail, it was like a dog. I again, like I, I keep on hearing that people tried to put him in jail, but like. I, I really would like to see the proof of that. I have doubt. Who tried to put him in jail? <clears throat> Yay. Tried to put... Why does he keep on saying this ship? Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Kanye West has claimed... So, so um, I must have missed this. Sorry, that's my fault as a shitty streamer um, who doesn't pay atten enough attention to the content that she's watching. Sorry about that, guys. Teehee. Um, Kanye West has claimed in a recent interview that he almost wound up behind bars due to tax evasion. And then he, he ended up having to pay a multi-million dollar tab to get out of it. So so he, he, he it's tax evasion. Okay, cool. That has nothing to do with Jewish people. What the fuck are you talking about, my dude? Wait, where was that guy? Where's that guy who was talking about everything um, Ye was saying was uh, was factual? <laughs> um, show me how Jewish people uh, have control over the American taxation system. Please, please and thank you. Fucking show me the receipts. Was biting my arm and I, 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 I almost shed a tear. Almost. But I still walked in stride through it. Yeah. I, I think I think they've been extremely unfair to you. I who think. is they though? We can't Pro, say who they Pro, is. Corporate press. We? I'm not using the. I don't, I don't use the word as. The, uh... Who is they though? 
Fucking hell, what a fucking prick. As the way I guess you, you guys use- I'm, I'm talking about- It is about them though, isn't it? I mean, Texas because- no, them because when you think about it, yeah. consider it. Oh. In 2018. What do you mean it's not? It, what, what do I mean, like, uh, uh, okay, so how about- Are you leaving? Yep, the he left. He's gone. I'll say it right now. Um, you guys, I, I, you guys want to bring that stuff up? And then have think the we're discussion. not going to have a like, conversation? Like, have the discussion. Like, you, you think, yeah, he's going to come in here and say, Here's my pain. Here's my suffering. Yeah, I'm gonna say, I hear you. Go. And then he's gonna say, and it was just people. Okay, but don't you consider? So I'm not gonna do this. I, I refuse. Go, uh, make sure he's cool. All right, go for it. Luke and I will have a conversation. So uh, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. So now it's just Nick Fuentes. Can't say I'm surprised. What what what, well, what 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 do I even do other than Fuentes, ask him? Please elaborate on this. Are you referring still, yeah. to individuals? Or are you quite literally blaming an entire group of people for the fact that powerful individuals are causing you harm? I, I really Epstein didn't Epstein himself, by the way. I mean, this is this is what I always say. They're always halfway there. They're always just halfway there. They just don't realize that there's a systemic. These are systemic problems within capitalism. These are systemic problems within capitalism. Oh my gosh, this is amalgamation between. Whatever that guy's name is, and 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 uh, Tim Pool, oh, that's horrific. The libertarian guy. Oh, is he libertarian? Oh gosh, cringe. Keep him away from my nephews. I wanted to ask Nick about his thoughts about MLK because I know they contradict uh, his comments about that. But but a, a, again, these are mass generalizations that don't really help anyone in my perspective. They just kind of sound like their opposition. They sound what they're kind of going against the woke mob that's always saying white men, white men are responsible for everything. When I see people just use generalizations, it kind of cheapens the conversations. It cheapens uh, a dialogue that we could have here that, that I was planning to, to, to talk to Ye about specifically bringing up like, hey, let's actually talk about this in a real concise way. Let's not get emotional. Let's I'll, not walk let's, out let, of let, here. Let, let's let, actually let me tell ourselves. all you guys outright. I said, this is going to be a big issue. Before the show, obviously, people are going to bring up the questions of anti-Semitism. Why don't we talk about the news? I want to hear what happened with this meeting. I want to understand what Ye24 is. And then we can do a longer conversation about any of that stuff. And Ye, literally in the first five minutes, says, no, well, I want to talk about a group of people and, and point to them. Whatever, man. This, you want to know why? Look, you're not going to sit here and you're going to walk out of the room. You're free to do so, man. But literally, I said a couple sentences about, I don't think that's fair. Did I, did I insult the man? He seriously can't handle. He can't handle well, it. He also left during the Pierce Morgan interview he did, but he came back. So I, again, I, we should be able to have this conversation. What's up, Chris? What's up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, man, I wanted to talk to these guys about why they're meeting with Here, Trump. Chris. I want to know what happened with the dinner because we yeah. hear a lot of rumors about it. I want to hear about their and 2024 why, platform, which they were promising, which they were talking about, like they're going to be officially. Let me, you know, let me let me explain to everybody. Right. That, you know, unfortunate they walked out. Fine, maybe they'll come back. Whatever. This is the biggest challenge with dealing with identitarianism. I do not believe that the predeterminate factor in someone's worth, value, or agenda is based on immutable characteristics. Uh, Kanye is a black man. He does not represent all black people. There are Jewish individuals who work. Oh in no, banks. I haven't yet. Dave Chappelle made the joke about Jewish I'm people in Hollywood. Let's switch to that actually. Like, but it doesn't mean anything. Be you got boring. a lot of black people in Ferguson. Doesn't mean they run the place. The point is, it's me. Just, I'm all it's, about just, it's just basically t Tim Pool trying to make himself look good next to um, next to Kanye. Oh yay, sorry. But yeah. Whole lot of bullshit. Whole lot of bullshit. Man. It's so easy to make yourself look good next to fucking Nazis, eh? Jeez. Deep State PSYOP. Um. Have a look. System this past week, and the didn't even call Nick a Nazi a supremacist. Of course not. You can't go around calling everyone Nazis. Then the meaning of the word, uh, <laughs> then the meaning of the word goes away. <laughs> Although, seems very much to me like the opposite is true, based on that. Amount of information exposing the negligence and the fraud around Sam Bankman-Fried, or SBF as he's known, 
and FTX and Alameda. I don't know. I don't know a lot about how this went down. I, I, I should watch the CoffeeZilla. Never ending. But what if this wasn't a big fraud? or an innocent mistake, but instead it was a deep state operation to capture cryptocurrency once and for all. So the state, the elites, and the powers that be can maintain their power and grasp over money and capture crypto for good. Well, in this video, I'm going to break all this down and lay out the receipts, as I call them, showing the endless rabbit holes underneath FTX and the deep state plan, including who was behind FTX and their sister company Alameda, who backed them, what their ties were with the governments and globalists, what the ultimate plan was, the goal of using the state and regulations to capture crypto, and how it all came crashing down. But it's not over yet, so let's go. All right, welcome back. We are going to wake up more people with this video for sure. We are going to expose what the deep state is doing with regulations. Mark Ross, and market disruptors. So market disruptor is a word that people use instead of entrepreneur to sound cool and uh, quirky. Inside the cryptocurrency space, I'm about to blow your mind. I'm asking in advance if you could just take this information, think about it for a little bit, and then go discuss it with other people. Now, before I jump into this video, I want to say real quick, I'm looking for you. I'm looking for people like you to come work on my team. We're looking for copywriters. We're looking for researchers. We're looking for social media people. If you'd Ooh. like to work- Oh, I'll be a social media person. Yeah, give me a job. I'll do it. I promise I won't fuck it up. Work in the Bitcoin, macro, crypto, uh, freedom space. I know, I know how to, I know how to post it like a crypto bro. I just like gotta like type in um, crypto into like a AI generator and uh, set up like 50 bot. oh my gosh what a fucking pause holy shit that guy's f oh that is a that is a libertarian staring at your children face right there age of consent what that face age of consent what <sighs> that's like more of a face than the um you know the the meme where a guy's looking behind himself yeah that's that meme but for libertarians. Then come join my team. There's a link down below. You can check it out. Well, I mean, okay. Let's, let, let's be serious for a second. The fact that he used the word deep state um, just automatically, like, <clears throat> sorry. The fact that he used the word deep, the, the term deep state without defining it in any, like, meaningful way, um, as if we're supposed to take the existence of a deep state as some sort of, like, given. Uh, basically just, um, uh, yeah, takes, basically, like, debugs the video for itself. Um, the deep state is a conspiracy theory that has not been proven. There are no ways to prove it, as far as I know. Uh, I can't do anything right now. Why not? Oh, I don't have any lockpicks. Oh, that's probably why. That's probably a good point. I need to get some lockpicks. But yeah, uh, unless he explains what he means by deep state, I'm just going to say, yeah, video debunked. Too easy. Also, I'm having a live presentation. I do them about every other month where I have a big chart of what I, what I think the Fed, the central banks are going to do and how we're going to respond. There's a link down below if you'd like to come join me. I'm doing a live presentation with live Q&A. Check out that link down below. I'd love to have you if you'd like to know what I'm calling the central bank's playbook 2.0. All right, now let's go ahead and just jump right into the video. Now we're going to dig into FTX, but I did a video last week explaining how it worked, how FTX <coughs> and their sister company Alameda created this environment, how they created value out of thin air. So I'm not going to re rehash all of that. Yeah, so for the people who don't realize, uh, it's it's a Ponzi scheme. It was a Ponzi scheme. And they took the money and run. Ran. That that That's what it was. I already did it in a long video. I'll link to it at the end if you want to watch that to learn how it worked. But now I want to expose who's behind it and what this real ulterior motive is. Okay, so... First of all, why has he got a pen when he's using a green screen? Wait, is that a green screen or is it a monitor? Like, what is he doing? Well, the media loved FTX. 
They blew them up. Oh, the pen they works. were the darling, so to speak. Every financial person was talking about them. The big VCs, they all invested into them. You know, we got uh, Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary with lots of money. All the big C firm, uh, VC firms in there. We got you know athletes like Tom Brady and his wife Giselle. They're they're invested into it. Of course, the financial elite on TV, Jim Cramer from Mad Money. He says that Sam Bankman-Fried, SBF, doles out credit lines to save crypto institutions. He's the new J.P. Morgan. So he's like trying to make a king. Oh, he's the guy. He's the best. He's super smart, right? So everyone started building him up. Of course, Fortune Magazine <laughs> ran him on the cover, calling him the next Warren Buffett. I mean, everybody was trying to say this is the smartest guy, this is the guy, the next guy, the king, etc. Okay. We he was going around rubbing shoulders with celebrities as well as politicians. Here we have him with uh, Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, of course, SBF, all together, cozy, cozy, buddy, buddy, pushing for legitimacy and more. We'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. So everybody was building him up. He was the guy, the wonder kid. But where did these people come from? Who is behind all of this? And that's right. what we're gonna dig into for, for a second. So what the fuck is what, what the fuck is this God code shit? A gang of His kids. parents? His parents question mark? This is what has come out since. There's an article written right here. Yeah, it's like people like man makes lots of money. Other people who make money like um celebrate his success. Uh yeah, that seems pretty fucking normal to me. That that seems to be like what happens a lot, actually. Uh yeah, what the fuck? It says that Sam Bankman Freed SBF, his crypto empire was run by a gang of kids in the Bahamas who all dated each other. <laughs> I'm not gonna dig into that. That's a whole nother rabbit hole of some really weird stuff. I don't really want to go into that, but it was a gang of kids. So how did this gang of kids managed to build the second largest cryptocurrency exchange. Now, I'll come back to this, but the first largest cryptocurrency exchange is Binance out of China. The second one is out of the United States. <laughs> out of going China. On I love the way that, I love the way that these people say China. Everyone's got their own own way of trying to say like China. China. They think that crypto is a meritocracy, not a marketing scheme. The thing is, merit anyone who thinks anything is a meritocracy is a fucking is a fucking idiot. Can I have my China? Can I have my China? Fucking hell. Americans are just just weird. The fact that Ob I, like, I will never get over the fact that Obama used uh, the word uh, meritocracy. Obama said that America was a meritocracy. Like you cannot, you cannot like make your country sound more like a clown clown country than claiming that um it's a meritocracy Obama, like um meritocracy is a like satirical device it's it's the idea it's the idea it's taking it's taking the idea that like um you know working hard um, is what uh, matters in life, and and the people who work the best and and just are the best, they'll they'll just end up at the top. Um, but that's like not how life works. People start with different at different starting points and have different. That people are different races. People have different genders. Like we have an intersection of class structures that affect directly how we're able to um, make it in life. And hello, who are you? What's this? What's this? The missing prophesy. I bring an urgent message. The missing prophecy. Oops. Didn't even realize there was, I was missing it. Speak that all like to party and date each other in the Bahamas. How did they manage to get the second largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world and rub shoulders with the world's most connected Tell us. political elite. Who Tell us. You have, you, ha you have so, me as convinced. As I explained in the other video, which I'll link to at the end, there was a sister company. There was FTX and then there was Alameda. And they worked mm -hmm. together to fraudulently make um, valuations. Now, Alameda yep. was run by... So basically the same as how the banks worked in, in on a smaller scale.
girlfriend, Caroline. And just so you can see who was really behind it, here's Caroline right now. Let's just hear directly from her. Yeah, absolutely could pull it off without my math degree. <laughs> use very little math. Um, use a lot of like uh, elementary school math. Being comfortable with risk is very important. <laughs> um, <laughs> we tend not to have things like stop losses. I think those aren't necessarily a great risk management tool. I'm trying to think of a good example of a trade where I've lost a ton of money. Um, well, I don't know. I probably don't want to go into specifics too much yeah, with that. <laughs> All right. So you heard it directly from the CEO Good of Alameda, the market maker, supposedly the most sophisticated, the most advanced. We will do the capitalism uh, and we will do the capitalism bigly. The money and power flow is just the rip of wire, comrades. Ten billion dollars. Never the power of the failing Antifa. Talking about how she doesn't use complex math. She doesn't use stop losses for risk management. Hmm. <laughs> and that's who was running the money. She also would tweet things like no, this. No, no, so you know, yeah, that, that's it. She posted this on Twitter. Nothing like regular <laughs> amphetamine used to make you appreciate how dumb a lot of normal, non-medicated human experience is. Hmm. So we What's got, that got to do kids anything? that are drug addicts. What? Wait. I, I I take amphetamines. Like, wait, what are you talking about? Like, she's using. She, that's not like drug addicts. That's like use that's similar to what you would uh, say, um... Wait, where is it? Where's Nicolene's diary? I want to see the diary, dang it. Sorry, I'm just trying to find some stuff. Nothing wrong with, nothing wrong with Alpha's brother. But when Caroline does them, it's libertarianism, yeah. Wall Street cocaine. Wait, down here maybe? Is that where I came from? <laughs> that don't know what risk management is, nope, managing tens Good. of billions of dollars. But who is actually behind this? Wait, is this motherfucker actually saying that people at the top aren't drug addicts and don't constantly use cocaine? The fuck are you talking about? What do you think you're gonna do with all that money? Like, fucking, of course, of course, millionaires and billionaires do drugs. Are you fucking kidding me? Wait, do you think that you have to not do drugs to get to the top? I want, I, I, I want someone to point out a millionaire or billionaire that didn't do fucking cocaine every day, or every other day. Like, seriously, I don't believe you. <laughs> and that is the question. And Hedgeye ran a video here that kind of broke some of this down. Let's go ahead and play this Who? video. DX. How does this guy, ex how does he keep doing what he's doing? When anyone tries to pin SBF down on where he made his money, you can't get a cogent answer. And, and in his trade, you needed real money up front in the place on this country crypto arbitrage to make big money. Right. Arbitrons. And simple things as who financed you, because you clearly didn't have the money. And his partner is a guy named Gary Wang. And no one can find shit on Gary Wang. And he's on the board of advisors of Sequoia. And I shit you not. You look up Sequoia stuff, there's a picture of Gary Wang of his back facing a computer. There's no picture of Gary Wang. So Gary Wang is the same CTO or the chief technology officer of FTX? Allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. But there's a chief regulatory officer of FTX and his name is Dan Freeberg. And if you Google Who? Dan Freeberg poker scandal, he was the general counsel of, I don't know if it was Ultimate Bets or one of those Me Too sites where they basically Me cheated too. against players. All right, so there was lots of stuff going on here. Lots of shady people like Gary Wang. Who is this guy? Why do we only see the back of his head not the front of his face. We don't really know who he is. And Dan Friedberg. Dan. Wait. So, so, so it's just like, who is Gary Wang? We know nothing about him. Next, we have Dan Friedberg. <laughs> what the fuck? Is that, what sort of conspiracy is this? He's like, oh yeah, he may have been involved in some shady practices. What's that got to do with anything? What's it got to do with Deep State? Come on. Friedberg, who is the chief regulatory officer. Yes, in charge of regulations. I feel like I'm going down into a shady harbor. Ah, ha, ha, ha. 
Oh, see what I did there? I made a joke about because this is my channel name. All right, did I find all the books? Almost. There's one more book. Some book. 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 Books. Where's the last book? It's supposed to be around here somewhere. Hey, Gibral, where's my book? Sorry, enough trouble to... Well, fuck you too then. Where's the book? Oh, there's a book. There's a book. I can't. Seek adventure in Merkmire. Seek adventure in Merkmire. Oh, it must be downstairs. On the wall, maybe? Ah. Seek adventure in Merkmire. Where, though? Well, maybe it's outside on the wall. Sorry, I'm trying to get all the collectibles. Has a very shady past with Ultimate Bets. Now, what's important about Ultimate Bets is that what they were accused of is having this God code where they could see the hands, they could see the cards of all the players. So th there was a back door. <clears throat> they had a back door so they could see the hand and they could bet against them. And now he happens to be the chief regulatory officer of FTX. Pretty interesting. Who else is behind it, though? Well, let's take a look at... I mean, that, uh, would be, that, that would be interesting if you told us how that was relevant. Like, how is that relevant? All you're doing is doing character takedowns. Like, this is just one big ad hominem video. His parents... Now, there's some very coincidental things here. Now, this might be coincidental. You're just, you're just showing me capitalists doing capitalism. Like, I, I, seriously, like, this is nothing new to me. Like, knowing that... What, what's that? Rich people do shitty things with people's money? What? No! Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw your uh, attention to that. So, April 25th, 2019, Biden announces his presidential campaign. 13 Biden. days later, SBF, son of Barbara Freed, co-founder of political funding Hussein Biden launches FTX Crypto Exchange. Maybe coincidental. The exchange is an overnight success yeah. and SBF becomes... Yeah, like like I always say, it's there's a guy putting dots on the wall and expecting us to draw the lines between them. It's really fucking old and annoying. And I am annoyed by not being able to find this freaking note. This is going to bother me because there's going to be one there that I can't find. Can't see it anywhere. I'm up there, like... You would think that it would be around here somewhere, or on the wall. But it's not. It's annoying me. You would think that it would be right here. It's not. Oh well, screw it. I think I found everything anyway. What? <sighs> I missed some. How did I miss those? Was the biggest donor to Biden. So, I don't know. Maybe there's something there, maybe there's not. But let's go ahead and just look at some more of the dots that we have here. All right. <laughs> so let's take a look at... <laughs> like I said, literally, just putting dots on the wall. Putting dots on the wall and expecting me to draw the lines. Oh, because this guy's a shifty capitalist. It must be, like, the deep state. Wait, is that what they think? Everything... Oh, that's right. Everything good that happens is because of capitalists. Everything bad that happens is because of Jewish people. Right. Cool. The parents for a minute. So, if you notice, SBF, Sam Bankman-Fried, has a hyphenated last name. Why? Well, because both of his parents kept their original names because they were accomplished in their careers. Well, what type of careers were those? Well, let's take a look at that. So, we can see Barbara Fried, for example, which is his mother, um, is a... They're both... They're both attorneys, and she was in charge of distributive justice in the areas of tax policy and property theory. Tax, um, tax policy, keep that in your mind. Then we have his father, Joseph Bankman over here, also a professor of law, and he was in the role of tax in the structure of Silicon Valley startups, okay? How government might control the use of tax shelters and testify before Congress and other legislative bodies on tax compliance. He ran initiatives to end cash, to crack down on tax 
fraud. So both of his parents were involved in nice. that. Both professors, both accomplished in their own right. Both of them okay. collectively. So so basically, like he had a head start. Oh, hello, buddies. He had a head start because he uh, his parents were rich. Like your te literally all he's all he's did done this whole time is basically said that capitalists do do stuff. Like that's it. We're also massive donors for the Democratic Party. They were what's called bundlers. So they would gather large amounts of money and donate to these super PACs. So they were very okay. connected. Now on top of that, that's SBS mm, like parents. Lobbying the government, coming from rich parents, um, shady capitalist practices. They don't, that, that, that's every capitalist. You're not telling me anything new. Tell me how it relates. Tell me what it's got to do with what you're trying to convince us of. I don't even know what you're trying to convince us of anymore because, like, you just keep on talking shit. Hey, oh, what super about pack. the girlfriend Caroline's parents who ran, uh, Caroline ran Alameda, the sister company? Well, it just so happens that Caroline right here, her father right here is. No, don't fucking tell me. Don't. Fu oh my gosh, she's even got like. You know what? Like, I wish she. I wish she had the um the the. You need the the red string. The red string and the pin board. That's what you need. It's hilarious. I fucking love the 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 arrows as well. Like, why? What? What? What have the arrows got to do with anything? Also, is he about to say that she's got rich parents? Because if he is, I swear I'm gonna jump out this window. Lynn in Minecraft. Ellison. And it just so happens that Glenn Ellison worked under Gary Gensler, and Gary Gensler happens to be the head of the SEC, Securities Exchange Commission. So okay. Gary Gensler used to work under uh, Glenn Ellison, who is the father of Caroline, who is the boyfriend girlfriend of Sam Bankman Fried from FTX. Now, okay. What's also interesting about that is Sam Bankman Fried graduated from MIT, where both Glenn Ellison and Gary Gensler were both professors. I was I was I was joking about the about the uh, red string. Like he's got red lines, but seriously, he's he's actually doing the thing. Um, this guy is basically trying to convince us that uh, the FTX crash was a deep state plan. Um, he hasn't really explained at all what uh, he thinks that the deep deep state is, which kind of debunks the whole thing as it is. Because unless he does that, I'm going to just assume that he's talking about the unprovable conspiracy theory that Jewish people run the banks. Like that that that's it. Like the the completely debunked conspiracy theory. Um, yeah, deep state is true. Deep state exists first. Is 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 false. Um, like, it, if you think that uh, someone has control over the um, the systems of um, capitalism, like to that degree, um, you're you're insane. Um, and uh, I, I'm gonna need a big one of these. If you're gonna if you're gonna come at me with that, you're gonna have to give me solid hard proof because something a conspiracy that big, uh, by definition, needs to have proof. Like, something, like, a conspiracy theory that big would need to have a paper trail, which which it just doesn't, apart from people just, like, claiming that... Oh, hello. You just, you just appeared out of nowhere, didn't you, lady? Hmm. Lots of dots to be connected here. So who is behind this? Gary Gensler, head of the SEC, the Democratic Party. Let's keep digging and see if any of these dots actually connect. How about if we go even bigger than that, past the Democratic Party, past the regular... What what dots are you trying to, like, is he trying to, like... What dots is he trying to connect, though, like... Oh, wow. I set her on fire with my sword. Nice. But, like, what, what kind of dots is he talking about? Like, he hasn't actually brought... Ah! Wait, where do they keep on coming from? They're like literally just appearing out of nowhere. So annoying. All right. All right, I'm gonna horse my way out of here. Look at my horse. My horse is amazing.
Don't chase me. Tory bodies in the United States. And what about the globalists? All right, so we can see that FTX <laughs> is a world economic. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh no. No, not the globalists. Not the deep state globalists. I thought the deep state and the globalists were supposed to be the same thing. Where is this guy going? I'm supposed to know like so much like backstory behind this that he's not giving us. Ah! Why did you send me this? This is this is this is painful. This is painful. Why would you do this to me? Do you hate me? Economic Forum partner. Pretty interesting. Listed on the World Economic Forum website. Since been yeah, yeah, the World Economic Forum. The connections to every like freaking millionaire out there in the market. Fucking hell! It's it's basically like the Millionaires Union. Scrubbed. Of course, the World Economic Forum does that when they don't want to be associated with anybody else. But we can see, thankfully, that the Web Archives keeps a record of that. In addition, we have Sam Bankman-Fried's brother, or Gabriel Bankman-Fried, and we can see that he is also politically motivated. He created something called Influence Watch, Guarding Against Pandemics, and it's a left-leaning advocacy created in 2020. This is from their website. A okay. left-leaning advocacy created in 2020 to support legislation that increases government investment in pandemics. So they want to push more policies and more regulations to lock people down. It was created to support a specific proposal yep. by the Biden Based. administration to allocate 30 billion. What's this? Billionaires, crooked billionaires. Oh, sorry, crooked capitalists with um, rich parents and rich family members and rich girlfriends with rich parents who hang out with rich people that do crooked things um, and are connected to like rich people organizations. Um, putting, make, creating, creating not-for-profit slush funds um, to both make themselves look as if they're doing something good for society while at the same time laundering their money so that she, they don't have to pay taxes on it. That's just capitalism, baby. In, in federal funding. <sighs> Let's create some organizations to go get some of that 30 billion from the government. Grifters, yep. Founded and is funded capitalists yep. by cryptocurrency billionaire Sam Bankman-Fried and directed by his brother Gabe Bankman-Fried. We can see uh -huh. right here tax exempt Like this is what family rich families do. They create not for profits, give themselves um give themselves and their family members and friends like positions of um up in management uh where all they have to do is basically pocket money while also doing the minimum possible like the minimum effort um for, to lobby the government um yeah that that's it that's 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 pretty standard for capitalism dude that's 501c founder gabe bankman freed in addition we can see that they are also guarding against Mark pandemics Dice. are raising oh. money this is a super pack right so they're raising money for the democratic party we can see here from 7121 to 1019 2000 wait this guy's they, called mark as well uh, have total receipts of almost four hundred thousand dollars that they raised as a super pack for that oh, it's and we can see right here that <clears throat> crypto billionaire sam bankman fried pumped 40 million dollars into the democratic your party desktop's getting pretty crowded there the buddy terms which just happened okay just days before the bankruptcy scandal happened yeah sam okay. bankman fried sbf saw his business yeah, um, Democrats are currently calling for investigations into what well, FTX. Uh, did you did, did you know that? Like, you can say that money is moving from one place to another, but you also need to show how their uh, interests have aligned. Like, um, yesterday I was talking about um, uh, what was I talking about yesterday? Okay, we watched a rather long video yesterday. Hold on. We have a look at it. Du, 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 du. Okay. Sorry, y'all. My brain isn't working too well today because I'm a bit stressed from bullshit happening. What? Updates have release dates. Oh, what? 
Do, 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 do. Gonna check out that because that's interesting. <sighs> History. So, how is everyone doing today? Oh, yeah, the Lunar Oi stuff. Yeah, so I was talking yesterday about um, the Lunar Oi stuff and how she was talking about how the connection, the connections between that particular politician um, and certain organizations. Like the difference there is because I we, we can actually... The difference between that kind of conspiracy theory is that it can actually be proven with material evidence, whereas this conspiracy theory is literally just dots on a screen that we're expected to draw the lines between. Like, that's the difference between, like, a conspiracy theory that I can get behind and a conspiracy theory which is just... Look at these capitalists doing capitalism. This cryptocurrency exchange, FTX... This is just like libertarian. Libertarians must have like constant Pikachu faces when when like ca capitalists do shitty things. That's what it is. They're just Pikachu facing all off all the time because they can't understand how their perfect system keeps on getting going wrong when it's built in to the system. You dumb, you dumbasses. File for bankruptcy after it funneled forty million to the Democratic Party. Okay. So hmm, his parents are professors who specifically work in areas of trying to ban cash and enforcing tax policy. They're also major democratic bundlers, if we will, raising money, donating to Super PACs. Okay. His brother also started a business that will hopefully get money from the government, as well as donating lots of money back to the Democratic Party. He also has ties to the regulatory body with his girlfriend and Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, and somehow, this exchange was started just after Biden announced he would run, and they became Biden's second largest donor. Now, I don't okay. know, maybe it's just all coincidence, but at some point, you want to think that... Well, yeah, at the moment, it is co coincidence until you can prove a link. Like, you can talk about correlation, right, and all of this stuff, but it, it, it doesn't mean anything until you can actually draw that line. Don't, I'm not going to do that work for you. Man, maybe these dots... I, I am far too lazy to do that for you. ...are more than coincidence. In addition to that... Maybe said, it's more than a coincidence! Form, it's on their website, Fuck you, dude. And it's not just Sam Bankman-Fried and his mother, or his brother, or his girlfriend's dad. It's also his auntie, Linda P. Freed, listed right here on the World Economic... All you're doing is showing that nepotism exists. Come on, dude. Dude, this isn't a conspiracy theory. This is just capitalism. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you don't think FTX was an obvious money laundering scheme? Oh, no, obviously it is. No, no, no the, this guy is... this. The, it, it's just fucking capitalism in its purest form. It's a, it, it was a Ponzi scheme, and that's it. But, like, it wasn't, like, some deep state plan to delegitimize uh, cryptocurrency. That's just hilarious, because cryptocurrency itself is a money laundering scheme. Cryptocurrency itself is a Ponzi scheme. From the start, that's what it's always been. Like, the technology itself could be used for other things. But we live in a capitalist society which doesn't have any use for um, the technology outside of making money. Like, we're just going, because of the system that we live in, we're going to use cryptocurrency in a way that makes money. And what's the way that makes the most money? Ponzi schemes. That's why they're fucking illegal, because they scam people. The whole thing is a Ponzi scheme, and it can't be anything else than that, other, unless we value something other than the accrual, accrual of money within society, which isn't possible under capitalism. It's just, it's just crazy. I, I, I just, this guy is, like, breaking my brain, because all he's doing is, like, showing everything that's wrong with capitalism. He's basically he's he's basically a socialist and he doesn't even realize it. It's hilarious. Forum website, a scientist in epi epidemiology 
As a matter of fact, from the John Hopkins Medical Institution. Now, you might remember uh, that. I love it how they, uh, you could tell that the organizations that they think are like deep state controlled as well, right? Deep state controlled, because they're like, oh yes, it's the Johns Hopkins. Hmm, it's one of them. That name, John Hopkins, because they took part in the pre pandemic games that were ran before the actual pandemic came out. Yes, they, they were the ones that ran that. So it's the they mother, army again. It's his mother, it's his father, it's his girlfriend and her dad, the SEC. Yeah. The yeah, 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 yeah. Capitalism is built upon nepotism. My dude, you are you you are a socialist. I'm I'm sorry to tell you this, but you are a socialist. The World Economic Forum and even his aunt are all parts of this. Now, like I said, some of this might be coincidence, but I mean, you know, blockchain I voting to stop letter fraud and count votes faster. Hey, hey, you know what? You know what? I'm for that. Hey, if the government gives us all a blockchain um, ID, right? Like we don't even need blockchain ID. That's that's just bullshit. We just need we just need like a a um. A universal ID so that we can just um, do do shit online. Just vote. Yeah, the blockchain technology would be fantastic if we lived in a, a society in a socialist society, or in a communist society where the value of things is dictated by how much they can um, add to the betterment of humanity, rather than how much money you can make out of it. Like I don't understand why people advocate for <clears throat> human um, prosperity, um, like hum the human race's um, prosperity, as a secondary consideration to that of making money. I, I don't understand how anyone can justify that. Other than saying, oh, gulags. That's it. That's, that, that's all it is. Also, also welcome, first time chatter. I'm oh, sorry. Oxnaboni, Bonnie, Oxnaboni, welcome to welcome to the Shady Harbor. It's good to have you. Top of that, it says right here, Democratic mega donor with Ukraine ties under federal okay. investigation. With Ukraine okay. ties, what are we talking about here? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Hold, you don't know how anyone can trade the currency back by the strongest military for a dog coin. <laughs> Thanks, it's OG. Oh, OG Snowbone. Snowbone, I like that. <laughs> what did I say? I said Ogs now, bunny. <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> Ogs nobody. OG Snowbone. I like it. Snobbity. <laughs> It's a snobbony! Ah, uh, thanks for the follow. Snowbone. OG Snowbone. I, I'm I'm having it I'm finding it a hard enough time to, to um call Ye the correct name. Like I know I know Ye is Ye is fallen, but like it's no excuse for me to get his like name wrong. You know what I mean? I wouldn't like it if someone got my name wrong. Because now we're really going globalist. Well, it says right here that the cryptocurrency, crypto we're going crypto globalist, guys. Friday is headed Here we are, brother. Mega donor Sam Bankman Fried, SBF, and under investigation by the Commodity Futures. Wait. Okay. Wait. This is 13th of November 2022, right? Who? Wait. Is aren't the Democrats uh, in charge right now? Wait, what, what was he- he was talking about them being, like, Democratic donors? Like, but the Democrats are still investigating them? Doesn't that, like, kinda, like, um... Like, doesn't that- doesn't that make it kind of, like, defeats their entire, like, argument at the end of the day? I- I feel like that does. Trade and exchange, and they donated massive amounts of money to Ukraine. We can see the report right here. It says the FTX connection to the Ukraine government and the World Economic Forum. Curiously, coincidentally, Curious. the Ukraine government launched a cryptocurrency donation website in March that was backed by who? It was backed by FTX. Yeah. Aid for Ukraine, which has the backing of... Shock. Doctrine. 
disaster capitalism. Two things that this guy needs to look up and learn about if he's going to do... Like, dude, like, if you don't even know, understand how your system works, then you shouldn't be criticizing people who just do what the system allows. Like, I, I gotta be honest, like, this is, no this is normal. This is capitalism working as planned. This is how shit works in society, my dude. Oh, there's one more down here that I didn't find. Yeah, this is just how things work. Like, this isn't, like, this is what I mean. I, I say, I say, I'll say it once, I said it a thousand times, like, they, they're always halfway there. Yeah, why would people donate to Ukraine? Curious, like, they're at war. They're at freaking war. They, they, I don't, honestly, I don't really, uh care to get into the whole debate over the 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 nazi uh ukraine stuff because like that happens literally everywhere come on like the arguments against ukraine as having nazis right in their forces to me is are the same as um the um fundamentalism of hamas uh Ukraine is currently being invaded by an imperialist nation. <laughs> we can talk about the Nazi shit once they have their country back, I think. I think that we can definitely prioritize things. Maybe. <laughs> I don't like Nazis. Uh, but I also don't like imperialism, and you gotta, like, weigh things up for damage, damage versus, yeah, one thing versus another. I don't know where I was going with that. But, like, donate to Ukraine, sure, support Ukraine. Just don't fucking sanction the Russian citizens who really aren't the ones who need to be damaged. We should sh sanctions just um, destabilize countries. Destabilized countries breed ignorance and fundamentalism, and create l gr much, much greater problems for the world later on in life. Like, just, just be chill. Be chill. Offer support. Like, how would you, how would you raise your kids? Are you gonna like smack one of your kids over the back of the head if the if your kids are fighting? Now you're going to sit them down, you're going to explain them what's wrong, and then you're going to allow them to make the mistakes for themselves and try and freaking, like, support them. And I'm not saying that, like, we should, like, look at the rest of the world from a white savior complex sort of way, but, like, we need to give people autonomy over their choices. And that includes countries as well. And the individuals that are affected the worst, we need to give sanct um we need to give sanctuary to we need to provide proper refugee support to people who are negatively affected we need to in try and increase um decrease the amount of poverty in these regions before we start talking about sending troops in to denazify shit and like cheering for uh, imperialism because let's be honest, like nationalism, on it, it, nationalism is used as a cudgel against un, other nations. Nationalism is bred from a separation of the other. Uh, U.S. Russia wanted a vassal state at the expense of Ukraine citizens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like uh, the Russia, Russia is an imperialist nation. It is doing what all other imperialist nations have always done, and that's try, trying to take more land. Um, yeah. And, and, and like, you know, 20 years ago, maybe, no, sorry, 30 years ago, maybe, I would have, I, I might have argued that um, Russia would have been doing it at the, um, as a response to NATO aggression or American aggression. But these days, I am less, I, I don't, I don't think that that's the case. NATO really hasn't, been doing um, nearly as much as what uh, some leftists are uh, claiming. Like, NATO bad, yes, um, but priorities, yeah, it's, it's, it is so fucking complicated. It's still complicated. 
Anyone who says that they know everything about what's going on in Ukraine and thinks that there is a decision, like a correct decision, like every, no matter what, what the rest of the world does, it's going to fuck, the people who are going to be fucked over the most are the Russian citizens and the Ukrainian citizens. These people are going to be fucked over the most and they, these are the people that need to be focused on. Um... When we're making decisions, we need to be focusing on the people. We need to provide medical aid to these people um, at gunpoint, um, if necessary, in the case of Palestine. I know that I'm um, moving away, but, like, we should be using military uh, forces to uh, force uh, aid to uh, Palestinian citizens through the blockades. The fact that we're allowing Israel to blockade uh, medical aid to Palestinians is just fucking disgusting. Um, and also pr providing a um, uh, possible citizenship and refugee status to people who need to leave these countries, or even just want to leave these countries. You know? I can tell you that I would never want to leave my country. I didn't even want to leave my fucking home, but I had to. Like, the thought that people just, you know, shop around for countries to move to, as if they're trying to be some sort of opportunistic, like, pests or something like that, is just fucking disgusting. These people are literally uprooting their lives and starting again from nothing and then they come to our borders and we turn them around and the boats sink offshore and we forget about it yeah we can talk about we can talk about um nazis in ukraine when we actually offer um support for people looking to escape these areas and these wars and give people homes and shelter because that's what they'd really deserve. That's the, those are the people that really need our help. Of crypto exchange FTX. Hmm. We've already we've already talked about. We already kind of know that wars like what's going on in Ukraine is a way to funnel money right back into your pocket. Well, not my pocket or your pocket, but pockets by the connected few. And now they just happen to launch a cryptocurrency initiative, which of course who participated in? That's right, FTX, with ties to who? Yes, the World Economic Forum and the Democratic Party. It says aid for Ukraine is cooperating with the cryptocurrency exchange FTX. I know, coincidence, right, Mark? It's got, it's got to be, just coincidence. You're yeah, well, at the moment it is. You need to draw the lines between them. Like, this is, this is, yeah. There are too many lines. Well, let's keep digging. Okay, so now that we know about the coincidences or the ties between the parent... So deep ties to Gary against the SEC. So basically his... What? Isn't that just his uh, his girlfriend's dad? And okay, the deep ties. regulatory body, the SEC, the World Economic Forum, how many people? Ukraine, are, like, all of that. Now, why? What's really going on here? What are they trying to do? Well, this is where we get into this deep state operative to capture crypto. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about regulatory oh, capture. All right. So we know that Sam Bankman-Fried, SBF from FTX, has deep ties to Gary Gensler from the SEC. We already know that because his girlfriend, Caroline, who runs Alameda, the sister company, Ooh. her father. Okay. Hold on. Sorry. I need to go to the ladies' room. Uh, don't go anywhere or do. Either way, though, I will be right back after this short break and a few ads. <laughs> Yeah, we're back. Sorry about that. Which was a pressing need. That Sam Bankman-Fried, FTX, who came out to be the savior of the cryptocurrency space when Terra Luna went down, which then Three Arrows Capital and Voyager and Celsius, all those went down. He stepped up to bail out the whole industry. And because he was the savior, then he went to Washington to now impose his new regulations. So he saved the world, and now he's going to tell the whole world what the new regulations are. As a matter of fact, we can see here, Sam Bankman-Fried, backed bill so the reason why that uh, people want to regulate um cryptocurrency currency uh is the same reason why um they banned ponzi schemes pyramid schemes and mlms are under attack um when you don't when you have a capitalist system in which um the that what is moral what is moral for society uh is prioritized 
first and foremost by how much money that you can accrue. Um, that's just how shit works. No. Um, yeah, that's just how it works. Thunder, Miss Thunder Thighs. Okay. Fair enough. Someone was looking for me. Okay, buddy. Backed a bill to regulate digital assets, and it finds support from several senators in wake of the FTX collapse. So he went to Washington and said, hey, the industry's all messed up. I saved it. So, you know, I'm a savior. And since I saved it, I can tell you how bad it is. And let me tell you the new rules that we should be putting under. So he was trying to capture the industry. Or what happens with regulations is they build themselves a moat, preventing other people competition from coming in. And that's exactly what he was doing. We can see more, right? That's not what regulations do. Regulations stop people from uh, scamming people, which is what currently cryptocurrency is. It's a scam. Here, it says, uh, Sam Bankman fried was lobbying the CFTC, Commodities Futures Trading, for greater oversight yes. over the digital asset marketplace. So he wanted to have more oversight. He wanted to be the one to make the rules. It says here, the FTX CEO also spent hundreds of thousands of dollars lobbying lawmakers. Does this guy think that the CEO of this company makes decisions all by himself? Does he think that this person acts and is basically Elon Musk? <sighs> and the CFTC on legislation that would expand the scope of the agency's role in regulating the crypto industry. So he spent lots of money in lobbying bribing, if you will, both lawmakers and the CFTC to expand the scope of what they do. Of course, that he could drive, that he could direct. Of course, that would benefit him the most. It goes on, we can see here, it says, as FTX aggressively, well, it says here that uh, before the CFTC's probe into the Bankman Freed, the former head of FTX aggressively lobbied the agency, aggressively spending lots of money, working really hard, lots of trips to Washington, and funded several key lawmakers overseeing it. So not just lobbying the agency, but he found the key people and he even went after them harder, pouring cash into their campaign coffers. They include lawmakers from the Senate and the House Agricultural Committees, the agencies that of course oversee the CFTC. Who are they? Remember these names. Include the committee's chairwoman, Senator Debbie. Is he just going to show, um, to read out names of capitalists who are just shady? Just like, what we already know about capitalists is that capitalists be shady. Stave now. Democrat from Michigan, the committee's ranking member, Senator John Boozman, Republican from Arkansas, and the ranking member of the subcommittee on commodities, risk management and trade, Senator John Hoven, Republican from Montana. Look, this isn't about a Democrat, this is about a Repub Republican. They're all dirty, all right? Republicans and Democrats in here together. In addition to lobbying regulators of his own industry, Bankman Freed was once one of the Democratic Party's permanent donors. As a matter of okay. fact, second largest. He gave Democrats nearly $37 million in the yeah, tax deductible 2021-2022 too. election cycle, surpassed only by everybody's favorite... Uh... So so he donated to, some, to a um, political party that would... Um continue to serve his interests. Like, that's just normal, isn't it? That just seems like something which is pretty standard. Where is the Shrine of Mara? Where is this? No? Hold on. Shrine of Mara. There should be, there's supposed to be a um, collectible here. Sorry, guys. Maybe I get it from the main dude. I'll talk to the main dude. Conservative libertarians love to promote in self interest when it bad happens. It's a collectivist. It's globalism. Lobbyist. George Soros. I'm just kidding. Nobody likes him. And nobody likes SBF either, especially not anymore. All right. Now, this is what happens. All right. So just so you know, the biggest scammers, the Ponzi scheme originators, they actually work in the government. It's the government that allows this to happen. You think regulations are yeah. there to protect you, but no, regulations are there to allow these scammers to operate. We can see here Bruce Fenton, who recently ran for office. He didn't get elected, unfortunately. He says, reminder, Bernie Madoff, of course, you know that mm -hmm. name, synonymous with Ponzi schemes. Bernie Madoff ran a $64 billion Ponzi scheme. 
SBF was only 32 billion, so you know, rookie numbers. 64 billion Ponzi scheme and was the largest fraudster in US history, so SBF had some, some room to go. Madoff was also simultaneously the chairman of the largest securities regulator in the US. So he was the chairman of the securities regulator while he was running the largest fraud. The NSDR, now known as FINRA, Madoff also sat on advisory committees at the SEC. He was part of the SEC when he was doing this. It says, uh, a forensic accountant and securities expert sent a detailed 17-page whistleblower report detailing Madoff's fraud, including specific false trades he was doing. 17 pages detailing the whole thing. It was ignored by the SEC. I wonder why. Yeah. What? Corruption in government? In a capitalist government? Oh no, what a surprise. This isn't deep state, dude. This is people just using capitalism to... This is just capitalism working, as it always has. Ah! Madoff's son-in-law worked at the SEC, and his hmm. brother was Borger a King. officer. Sorry, <laughs> that was... Sort of like Sam Bankman-Fried, and his, and his girlfriend, and the father, and Gary Gensler, and the money going to the CIA. Again, buddy, you need to be able to prove all of this shit with facts and logic. Madoff was sentenced to 150 years in prison. Government never tries to crack down on corruption. Well, apparently not. Apparently that didn't happen. Wait, but I thought regulation was supposed to, like, make it easier for scammers. But the scammer was defeated by the regulation? I'm confused. This confuses me. I don't like it. FTC? Yeah, sort of like that. Now, we can see that, as I said, he was buddy-buddy trying to impose these regulations to capture the industry, capture it with regulations. Of course, it all backfired. And now those very regulations he was trying to put in place are the government's, uh, they're the new regulations they're trying to put in place. We can see here, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says, crypto must be regulated after the FTX collapse. So, was it a false flag? Did the false flag. just allow FTX, did they, did they build FTX? Did they use it to artificially pump for, you are making the video, dude. You tell me and show me your proof. All you've done is say, is show that capitalism is capitalism. That, that's it. That, that, that's it. All you've done is say, oh, you know, nepotism exists, corruption exists, um, money exists, um, must be a conspiracy. Like, oh, Pikachu face when, Pikachu face when capitalism fa fails to, um, do good things in society that's it that that that's 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 just it there is much more. Uh. this up provide money back to ukraine back to the democratic voters and to get in and make a big deal with regulations, you start to um, propose all these new regulations and then blow up the entire space for even more reason why it should be regulated? Well, if you think that's enough evidence, let's keep going because I have even more. What about the rest of the cryptocurrency space? So it's not enough to just capture what they had. They want to take out everybody else. So they want to take out everybody. They want to take out all the major players. And then they want to put so many regulations on it that nobody else can rise back up. If we get rid of all the big players that have the money, Who's going to fight the regulations? All right, so now they want to capture cryptocurrency. So, first of all, the companies, they create money from thin air. FTX, they create this FTT token. Their sister company, Alameda, pumps out of nothing and creates fake value. Now with these fake tokens... That but that, that's what cryptocurrency is, dude. You just described what cryptocurrency is. How is this a deep state plan? Fake value in crypto? Yeah, that's that's money, dude. Do you not know not you? Do you not know what money is, my dude? They fraudulently uh, created value for, then they can borrow against those or cash them in for dollars, and then they take that money and start manipulating the market. And what they do is they start taking down crypto companies. Now, what am I talking about? Now, you remember, I've covered this at length. If you've been following the cryptocurrency space at all, you know that really this all started happening in about May of 2022 when Terra Luna collapsed. When Terra Luna collapsed, then it was a domino effect and it took down everybody else. Then it took down Three Hours Capital. And then it took down Voyager. And then it took down Celsius. And it's only cascading. Well, it So exactly how the banks crashed? 
Okay. It looks right here that we Sounds like this is what happens when you have capitalism, but I don't know, what do I know? I'm just a dumbass anarchist. We are going, well, it says here that SBF, Sam Bankman Fried, is responsible for the Terra Luna crash. Everybody wonders, who is the one that took them down? According to a tweet. A according to a tweet. Someone tweeted that SPF was responsible for Luna uh, crashing. SPF moved fu used funds from 50x to support Alameda. Yeah, okay, cool. Seller. Well, turns out, <sighs> it looks like it's Sam Bankman Fried is the one that took down Terra Luna that caused the cascading effect. It says that CZ, the founder of Binance, knew that. SBF intentionally took down Three Arrows Capital. So first he took down Terra Luna, then he took According down to a Capital. tweet. Then Sam Bankman Fried moved user funds from FTX to support Alameda because Alameda, the sister company, was also caught up in the carnage. So what they did is they took user funds, if you had money on FTX, your money, and fraudulently moved them over to Alameda to prop them up because they also caused damage for their own company. It says that CZ from Binance approached Sam, approached Sam Bankman Fried but was ignored. So then CZ tweeted as a last resort saying, hey, look, um, we want to get rid of our money. Now, so they took down the major players. So he took down FTX, took down um, Luna. It took down Voyager. It took down Celsius. It took down Three Hours Capital. All right, what's next? Well, who are the other big players? Well, one of the other big players that US regulators have been trying to get for a really long time is Tether. Tether is a US stablecoin. It's the largest. It's the largest stablecoin. It's the oldest US dollar backed stablecoin. It's the largest US backed stablecoin, but it's not a US backed company. Of course, the United States regulators don't like that. They want to capture crypto. Now, they've been going after Tether for many, many years, and they haven't been able to get Tether. But what if there was another way to get Tether? So, Tether had loaned over $1 billion to Celsius, it had loaned billions of dollars to crypto companies. So, if they have billions of dollars of exposure, and we can collapse those companies, we might be able to show that Tether doesn't have the money they need to have the redemptions. Maybe they don't have the backing they say they do. This could have been an attempt to take down all the biggest crypto players, including... It's every, every, every single time. Every single time, it's the same thing. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Okay, these things all exist. These are dot points. Instead of drawing lines between them and actual hard evidence between them, now we're going to just move straight into speculation. Tether. Now, Every that's time. quite a big jump, Mark. Are you sure? Well, like I said, they've been trying to take them down for years. We can see here U.S. regulators orders Tether to pay $41 million in fines. The U.S. has been trying to get them. They've been filing lawsuits. They've been filing all types of orders to pay fines. And if you can't get in the... Hold on a second. Something's happened in my game legal way, let's get them the dirty way, and that is to take out all the players in the cryptocurrency space, and then we'll expose Tether for it. As it says, another cryptocurrency target for U.S. regulators is, yes, Tether. We want to get them out. Why? Because the U.S. wants to control the U.S. dollar stablecoin market. With who? With USDC by Circle, which is by Goldman Sachs. Of course, the U.S., you know, banking slash government agency that controls the stablecoin, the regulated stablecoin. They don't want the largest stablecoin out there that's not controlled by a US company. They want to get rid of them. And that was the move they did. We can see here on top of ah. that, FTX had gotten approval to run the only US crypto derivatives exchange. The only one in the United States, FTX had approval. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. So FTX had that. When FTX started going bankrupt, Binance, the number one exchange, who is not a US-based company and the US regulators have no control over, said, hey, maybe we'll give you an LOI, a letter of intent, to bail you out. We'll take you over. Now, in the original order, the um, FTX was going to give up their international companies, but not FTX US, which owned the derivatives exchange. But then Binance said, wait a minute, no, no, we want the whole thing because you have the only US deriv crypto derivatives and we want that as well. Now think about this. Maybe this was the bait being dangled for Binance to lure them in. Because if Binance were to come in and acquire FTX for next to nothing and get the derivatives, now the US <laughs> regulators would have full access to all of Binance's books. So they could take out all the major players, Terra Luna, Celsius, Three Hours Capital, et cetera. They could take down Tether and they could even capture Binance all in one fell swoop. Amazing how well that could have potentially worked out, but it didn't. Binance backed out, FTX went down. Now, FTX went down, but does that mean that the crypto industry isn't captured? Well, let's take a look at this. First of all, 
But he's talking about these things as if they're happening, as if we're, like, supposed to just assume that from the other things that he claimed, like Deep State existing, that there's some sort of intent here. You are making up a conspiracy based on things that are inherent within capitalism. This is not a conspiracy with people, like, rubbing their hands together. Like, this is just people wanting to make money within capitalism and using uh, corruption and, like scamming people for money. Will Sam Bankman fried be forced to pay? Will FTX have to pay? You're just, you're just butthurt that your scam, your scam baby that you didn't want to believe is a scam, turned out to be a scam. For what they've done, I don't know. Has he paid enough protection money to the mob? Look, come on, you already know by now. The government is just organized crime. Just at a different level, right? Organized crime got smart. They figured, hey, why pay? Why charge, uh, you know, our baker in the neighborhood for protection when we can just take over the United States and have everyone pay for protection? So has he paid enough protection? Will the SEC, will his girlfriend's dad's connections with Gary Gensler at the SEC, will all the money that he spent at the CFTC, will that protect him? I don't know. We also know that FTX isn't even a US-based company. Brian Armstrong, who's the head of Coinbase, says here that FTXCom was an offshore exchange, not regulated by the SEC. So does the SEC even have control? It's a Bahamas company. They don't even have control. The problem is that the SEC failed to create regulatory clarity here in the US, so many Americans, investors, and 95% of trading activity went offshore. Did Sam Bankman fried and his connections to Gary Gensler know that? That if I set up in the Bahamas, then the SEC can't reach me? Did that money he spent and those connections with his family pay off? Stop asking me the questions you're supposed to answer, dude! I don't know. Time will only tell. All right, now, what happens next? Well, crypto's been captured, all right? All the big players have been taken down. Tether is out on its own, being attacked. And now all of these regulations that Sam Bankman-Fried had been pitching to the CFTC and the SEC are now going through, right? This is the new battle cry. Like I said, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is saying, they must be regulated now that FTX collapsed. Yeah, because people lost their fucking money and livelihoods off of this shit. It's the same as when, when people are opening their eyes to the fact that cryptocurrency is a scam. It's just another Ponzi scheme at the end of the day. It's not some deep state conspiracy. It's just like, oh shit, people are getting un people are losing money and they're starting to get unhappy. If we don't do shit, they're not going to vote for us. That's it. So was this a false flag? Did they build it up, take everybody down, funnel? If it was a false flag, then you need to prove it somehow with hard evidence, which you haven't done. All you've done is say, oh, this person is connected to this person. This person is connected to this person. You need to be able to draw those connections with material evidence so like you know show us text messages where they're talking planning this stuff like real conspiracy theories actually have this evidence like elk like mk ultra there is there are declassified documents like the american interference in panama american interference in um venezuela um, American interference with in China, like all of these conspiracy theories, which are conspiracy theories by definition. They have material evidence that we can actually look to when it comes to this stuff. What you have is a conspiracy theory with no substance. The money out of Ukraine, fund all the Democrats. You're just, you're just Pikachu facing now that um, your capitalist scam has uh, been shown to be a capitalist scam party and then blow up the whole space so they can impose all the new regulations? I don't know. I'm connecting the dots. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. But what comes next? All right. And he said it better than I did. Thank goodness. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Like, yeah, that's it. That That's where it, that's where it is at the end of the day. He's just going to let us draw our own conclusions. <sighs> just, just ridiculous. Sorry, I'm just doing some. Uh... For some reason, all of my settings are different between characters, which is really freaking annoying. <sighs> I'm 
tick size 18 but yeah anyway before i continue doing like my my setting changes on this um i sorry i don't have enough time poser but like this came up on my feed so i'm going to react to it because i like games Hello! <laughs> Hi! Hi. <laughs> uh, I'm on YouTube again, Mom! <laughs> okay, whatever, let's do this. Hey everyone, my name is Jason, I'm a community manager at Coffee Stain Studios, and today we got a bit of a banger of a video. Wednesday video, by the way. I mean, when has that happened? Never. That's when. But yeah, something when, new. Wednesday Wednesday video. has it happened. Wednesday has it happened. out today. Or else. Or else lashing. That's how things work at Coffee Stain. I'm kidding. Completely kidding. Um, but no, uh, we are making this video today because, first of all, there's a few things we want to talk about. The first thing is Fixmas. Fixmas starts tomorrow. That's why this video is coming out today. Fixmas will come to Satisfactory again on the Early Access and Experiment. Hopefully I'll have energy okay. tomorrow now, the and fact we can start that, on like, that. We've been working on Update 7 a bunch and we haven't had a lot of time to put into Fixmas. In fact, we've had no time to put into Fixmas. That means that the Fixmas this year will be the same as Fixmas last year. Exactly That's the fine. same. So that is, you know, it would be better if 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 we had some new stuff, but we think that a fix miss is better than no fix miss, and this is all we can manage this time around. So I hope that's okay with y'all. Uh, and if you you weren't around for fix miss I didn't, last year, I didn't then, finish um, fix miss last year, so I'm actually you excited to finish it this year. It's so. bobs that you might have missed last year as well. So uh, I, I think it. it's going to be fun regardless. It's a nice little seasonal event. People tend to like it, so I hope it's okay that it's the same one as last year. Have fun. It's going to be good. Also, it's okay. It's all going to work with blueprints. So let's see what you do this time. <laughs> it's going to be good. And the next thing that I want to talk about is the big thing. I think I it wanna, was probably. I also want to see if they fixed up the snapping a bit because I won't won't be able to to properly play Satisfactory until they fix the snapping a bit. Even in the YouTube title, it might have been right there. Who knows? It's going to be the release date for update seven on early access. Okay. We are, um, I actually talked about this on stream yesterday. So if you don't check out our streams, twitch.tv slash coffeestainstudios devs, you should because sometimes, very rarely, almost never, but sometimes you get information before everyone else does. And so the release date for update seven to the early access branch will be on this Tuesday, 6th of December. So next week, it will be dropping at 3 p.m. CET, which I think is 2 p.m. GMT or UTC. Now I know previously we, we would uh, release these things later, usually at like 5 p.m. GMT or something like that. As you would have seen with the experimental version of Update 7, that was also earlier. We're going to be releasing it earlier again so that we have time monitor. here to fix any issues that happen with the, the launch as well. So like we're releasing it earlier so we can work on it if, if need be. Okay, if there's any fires, we can put it out and people don't have to like do overtime for that. Okay, so hopefully that's a, a fair a fair thing to do. And the final thing that I want to talk about real quick is going to be the Update 7 release stream. So there's going to be a release. There's going to be a stream, okay? And the stream is going to be next week on Tuesday, December 6th. And we're going to be starting at 2 p.m. CET. So that's one hour before the release. Uh, we'll hang out, do some fun stuff. And uh, I might be doing some giveaways as well. Uh, there should be some game key codes that I'll be giving away for, uh, I guess, Satisfactory or um, Goat Sim, Valheim, a Deep Rock, Midnight Ghost Hunt. So if you want to win some prizes, join in for that. I think that if you want to win any of those prizes, you will have to watch on Twitch because we will be streaming on Twitch and YouTube, but you, if you want the prizes, you might have to be on Twitch, okay? Uh, so yeah, there'll be some fun stuff like that. And we'll also be revealing our patch notes video that should be done by then. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, so we're, we're working on that at the moment. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So I hope to see you there. So it's gonna be twitch.tv slash coffeestainstudios devs or here on this YouTube channel, 2 p.m. CET, Tuesday next week. And yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. All the important news is now out there. I hope uh, that was interesting or something to you. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And I hope to see you again in the future. Take care, everybody. Have a lovely day. Bye. Bye. And also, bye to all of you. I need to reply to an email from uh, my real estate agents who have, well, my old real estate agents who, um, you know, I who forced forced me to uh, move out of my home and are now trying to. Um, take all of the money for the bond um which i yeah i'm not happy with
Yeah. So until next time, take care of yourself, take care of yourself and take care of someone else. And I hope things get better for everyone. Bye. -bye.